Hello, hello, and welcome to Minority Reports uh, Racism Misogyny panel. I'm your host, Mona Shake. I am very, very excited about this panel today, mainly because it's our first time doing a panel like this. And second, uh, because our lineup is like fire, man. We got, and I'm drooling. Look at me, I'm drooling already. I'm so excited about this lineup. Um, okay, so our lineup is pretty amazing. Uh, we have the amazing, uh, we have uh, a, a, an OG from London, we have an OG calling in from Dubai, uh, and then later we're gonna have an amazing uh, comic joining in from LA. Uh, so first we're gonna go ahead and welcome uh, the very funny, uh, you have seen uh, this hilarious comic on BBC, on Graham Norton, uh, my very funny friend, Shazia Mirza. Shazia, welcome. Hi, hi. hi. Hi, welcome. I wish Thank you had a little bit more light on your face, just a little bit more. Listen, I've got to tell you, it's nine o'clock in the evening here in London. So I was getting ready for bed. <laughs> so oh, that, I, that, was oiling, I was oiling my I was oiling my, my face <laughs> and putting my creams on. And you. then Mona goes, Oh, you know, you've got to come online. <laughs> took me two hours to download Google Chrome. This fucking technology, it's just too much. I just I'm want to get sorry. married. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry I put you through that. I apologize. But I'm so grateful that you could join us because I'm very excited about this panel. Uh, I'm going to invite our next guest up. Uh, she is uh, been seen on Comedy Central Arabia. I've been following her for a while. I've been wanting to do something with her. Uh, and she is a New Yorker. So I just love her even more. She's Italian, so I love her even more. Uh, the very funny uh, Mina Liccione, based in Dubai. Mina, welcome. Hey. Salam alaikum. Thank you so much for having me. How Hello. are you? <laughs> I'm like, it's midnight here, girl. Oh, I hear oh, you. Yeah. She's like, it's nine over there. I'm like, am I going to turn into a pumpkin or some shit? I'm like, it's midnight. <laughs> <laughs> You turned into a pumpkin. I am You're like, so I just there. Are you to this is, uh, this is I was like, I, my husband set up the chrome for me and everything. I was like, baby, come over. I, I need to make sure this is all good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. Uh, I am very, very excited about this. I, uh, I, I know uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna just uh, get going because, uh, hey, let's just jump right into it. Um, I want to start off with this question. So we're going to first talk about like uh, misogyny and uh, the, the the wonderful world of misogyny. Uh, we are all uh, uh, female comics, and we've clearly experienced that some form in, in another, maybe just in regular life or in stand up world. Uh, so Shazia, we'll start off with you. How much misogyny have you experienced as a female comic? Well, you know, in Britain, when I first started stand-up comedy, uh, there was no Muslim women doing stand-up. I was, I was the first. And this was only like 12, 13 years ago. And people would say to me, uh, guys, male comics would say to me, well, you're not going to be doing this for long, are you? Because you're going to have to get married. Um, and then um, they, I would, they would never have, when I started, there was never any women on the bill. If you were a woman on the bill, it's because you were a special act. Mm. So you were either disabled or black or a woman. All of those were in one category. Wow. And that was a special <laughs> category. You would be the special act for the evening. Uh, I didn't realize I was doing anything special. I thought I was just um, telling jokes like everybody else. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of times when men are being misogynistic towards women, they don't know they're doing it or they don't realize they're doing it. It's a, it's a subconscious thing. It's the way they've been brought up. It's what they're used to. This yeah. is how their mothers were, their sisters were, their culture is. It's not an excuse, but you don't know what you don't know. And right. this, is, this is what is normal to them. And until somebody corrects them, they don't know otherwise. And I think a lot of times, especially in comedy, women are not that confident to express their views express their views because they don't want to be confrontational they don't want right. to fight they don't want an argument they just want to keep the peace because for women right. this has been a way of surviving in life is to just keep yeah. the peace and now especially now you have to be brave 
and you have to yeah. not worry about offending people or um, being culturally offensive or whether you're saying the right thing or not. You just have to tell them the truth in a nice way. What is the nice way, Shaz? Yeah. Well, you know, you don't have to punch them in the face and call them a stupid misogynist. Oh, man, that's exactly how I um, want to look at that. Like, that kind of thing, Mona. What we, what we, what we usually do. We used to. We need to pull that back a bit. What we need to do is just say, "Listen, um, that's not how you do it. You know, that's not what you say. This is how you. This is how you treat a woman. This is how you. What you say to a woman. A woman might not appreciate that. Um, why don't you say it this way? Or this is what I mean. You know, there's many ways that you can have that conversation now. And if and if somebody's a decent person, they will always be willing to hear what you have to say. Sure. I agree with you. I agree with you. What about now, Mina? You're based in Dubai. Uh, you are yes. a New Yorker, correct? I'm sorry. Uh, you you're from New York. Yes, yes. I'm from New York, and I moved to Dubai almost 13 years now. Wow. So you and have yeah. you been doing comedy this entire time in Dubai? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. so wait, so yes, indeed. And similar to what she was saying about in the UK, we there was no local stand up. Just it wasn't. It, it, you know, the only the only stand up comedy there was were having big names flown in either from the UK or from the USA. So we kind of uh, my husband just happens to be a comedian too, and he's from Dubai. So yeah. we decided to start a school to offer more platforms and for people like she was just saying to, to get confident in their voices and to also, I don't, I don't want to say to educate, um, but more to to break stereotypes and, and be like, no nah, man, comedy, it, it doesn't have to be offensive and racist and vulgar. It needs to be honest, just, just yeah. to tell your point of view and, and, and it's all good. So yeah, 13 years later and it's, the, the scene is is coming up. Middle I East mean, is coming with our hip hop now. It's I mean, it's, it's I feel like, way. By the way, there's like a sound in the background. Do you guys hear that? Like there's like a somebody's talking in the background or something, or somebody's sound is off. I don't know. Um, that's okay. Um, uh, the wonderful wonderful world of technology and uh, li uh, and live streaming. Uh, it's uh, a blessing and a curse, right? <laughs> Let's, it. Let's go get some coffee. Um, it's yeah, from the government. Mona, it's Trump's government. They're in on this with us. Yes, they us. are. I hope they are, because I need some more gigs. I mean, my gigs are canceled. I, 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 hope, I hope they're not, Mona, because I've just got my green card, and I don't want to be deported oh. before I've even entered the country. Kasia, I will vouch oh. for you. Don't you worry. You can. I, I will shelter you when you come here. You can be a refugee in my place. Don't you worry. I got a refugee? You. Yeah. I, I'm British. In I'm British. I know you're I'm, not, I'm, I'm, so, I'm talking about if they come after you for whatever reason. I'm British. I'm British. I can never be a refugee anywhere. I'm so most I welcome. Anywhere. Refugee? I've never been called a refugee in my life. Actually, I'm, I'm a British refugee, not you though, because I need to leave America soon if this fucker doesn't leave. So I'll be a refugee in your place. I'm coming crash in your place, Shadia. I'm sorry, Mona. I don't know if you've heard, but we're full. <laughs> Canada's full too, oh. apparently. They're not making us either. Yeah. Yes, we're, Canada. We're is a very cool. small country. I'm That's sorry, true. we're a very small country. That's very true. And we have enough of your quota. That's very true. I have to find like a Scandinavian husband or something. Uh, I think that I heard. I've, that I've, heard, I've heard they're full. They're full as well. They're full. Full. Well, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I probably have to go to Pakistan and um, be somebody's fifth. Yes, life. Mona. Like your president says, you have to go back to where you came from. That's very true. That's very true. I mean, he's doing a good job at it. So we're going to make sure that he goes back to where he came from uh, come this November, which is his shithole, that he, his, his shithole background, wherever the fuck he comes from. Um, I want to I wanna uh, kind of touch upon, you know, I, I feel like, you know, this is a global issue. This is not even a South Asian, just a Middle Eastern issue. This whole, this whole thing with misogyny. But I feel like, 
in in the in the Middle Eastern culture, in the South Asian culture, it's a lot more accepted. It's a lot more, uh, you know, uh, it's digestible. People don't really find it that offensive. And then if women like you and I come out and like question people or call them out on it, they look at us like we have fucking two heads. Um, I feel like our roles in our culture, whether we're standing comics or not, as just women, is there, there are only two roles for women, two roles. Either you're a religious, pious woman, or you're a whore. There is no middle ground for women. Uh, I don't know, Shazia, do you feel that way? Well, I think this is an old, this is an old kind of statement here. I know it's, it exists in our culture, but I think Jerry Hall, who was married to Mick Jagger, yeah. many years ago, he she said, um, all that he all he wants is a cook in the kitchen and a whore in the bedroom. Yeah, and. That, um, that kind of idea that that's all a man wants is somebody to cook and fuck. Yeah. I mean, obviously, that is, belongs in the stone ages. But yeah. it is the basis of a lot of men's uh, philosophy these days, even, yeah. even if they're educated or not. Yeah. Because I've met men um, who have been very educated, um, who've wanted me to be their second wife. Right. You know, they had a first wife and they were looking for a second wife. Right. And you know, Mona, this was really offensive to me because I've never come second in anything in my life. I'm always first. Yeah. So yeah. I told him, Yeah, right. So I told him to fuck off. But the thing is, I mean, to be that entitled that I want a second wife. Yeah. And he was an educated man, but he had Stone Age medieval philosophy about how women should be. And I think that whether you're educated or not, sometimes it has nothing to do with it. Yeah. Sometimes it is just the way that men view women, mm -hmm. how right. they view them. And that can come from their mother being their primary role model. Right. It can come from the, the way their sisters are treated and they saw that growing up and they replicate that behavior. Sometimes it's it's just learned behavior. Right. And that needs to be uneducated by women like us right. telling them that actually this is not acceptable. We don't want this. We don't like this. We don't find this attractive. Let's right. find another way. And I think it's time for women to speak up. And the problem, part of the problem is women haven't spoken up yes. up until this point. Before, you know, we haven't been confident. We haven't had everybody behind us. Yes. We haven't had the strength. And also the big thing is we always felt we weren't going to be believed or right. we weren't, people weren't going to believe what we said if we came up and said, told a story about, you know, being raped or being assaulted. We weren't going to be believed. Right. But now the power is shifting where women do have more power to say what they think. Right. And there are going to be more women behind them, supporting them. Mm -hmm. And I think women especially need support from other women and yes. other men. Yes. And I think now is a primary mm -hmm. time for that. But don't you think, don't you think this, this I, I agree with you that women have a lot more power now, but, uh, you know, let's go to, let's go to, uh, like, Mina, you live in the Middle East, right? Is that the same yes, dynamic and is that happening in the Middle East? I mean, you're experiencing this in real time. Well, it's it's everywhere, you know? It's, it's, it's misogyny, racism, it's going yeah. to be everywhere in different forms and yeah. in different, you know, in, in different levels. Yes. Um, but right now it's, you know, a lot happened in Saudi Arabia in the last few years, a yeah. lot. And so, it's, you know, I, I think a lot of times, too, people think of the Middle East and especially Americans. They just they assume all of the Middle East is Saudi. Um, and, oh, no, and it's Dubai. Dubai is the uh, definitely Dubai is the Vegas of. Middle yeah. East. I mean, yeah. And like I was I actually checked the stats today because I, I wanted to know because um, his highness, the ruler of Dubai, he was uh, quoted numerous times saying that he really wants like the UAE to be in the top 25 countries for gender equality. So I yeah. said, you know what, I'm curious. I just want to see the stats right now. because That's a good goal to have. But where are we at now? And as of right now, in the UAE's federal government, 44% of the leadership roles are by women. And 66% are are held by women in leadership roles in the public sector. 
that's a pretty good number for a start. I mean, this, this is 66% and 44% is, is a pretty good number. And Dubai, you know how they are. We're, they're like, go big or go home. So if they have a goal, he's going to reach it. His highness will definitely reach it. So I, I definitely, in the 13 years I've been here, yeah. I've seen a huge, huge difference. But also it's a very young country. And one thing I really like about the UAE is that they make change very fast, very right. much faster than in the States. Oh, gosh. So they, they definitely, they want to fix it. We have over 200 nationalities are living in the UAE. It's like the Olympics over here. And we're living peacefully. So right. something, you know, they're doing something right. They're doing right. something right. And not everything's perfect, of course. There's growing pains wherever you are. Sure. But at least they're, they're making things. And, and I see a lot, many more women in positions of power, decision mm -hmm. makers, and, and, and starting to really speak which is amazing. And I didn't see that as much. When I first came here 13 years ago, absolutely not. But today is a different day. I, I definitely see a lot of progress. You know, when I, so came, to Dubai, when I came to Dubai uh, to headline a show, um, I saw a lot of local women and they had to wear a certain garb. Um, do those women have the freedom to take that off if they want to? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And Saudi, Saudi even now is, is starting to open that up. But in Dubai, 100%, it is a choice. It is a personal choice. Um, there, many of my friends, my sister-in-laws, I hear them often talk about the respect for their Shayla, the respect for their hijab, um, and that for them, it's, it's, it's an honor uh, because it's a religion, they're very, they're very religious. And this really has meaning for them. And then I have, I have friends and, and and family members who are the opposite. They're like, you know what? I choose not to wear this. Um, I'm I'm being humble. I'm living in in this way as a good Muslim, but I'm choosing not to to wear a job. So there's two very very different sides. And um, no, it's not forced at all. Well, like, yeah, I've been asked many, many, many times. I've been asked when I go back to the States, they're like, are you forced to be, you know, just like wear those head rags? Are you just forced in the corner? And I'm like, yes, yes. I just go along with it. I'm like, yes, I do. I was like, I, I have to wear it but fully covered. The only thing that's allowed to show is one ear so I can hear my husband calling for me. <laughs> to make dinner for him, his seven wives, his 25 kids and his four camels. I have to massage the camels afterwards. I've become so good at it, they call me camel toe. I mean, come on. <laughs> Sometimes you have to have fun with the stereotypes, you know? You just gotta, you're like, yeah, let's go with it. So what's the, can you explain what the Shayla is? I, you know, I know, of course, What what is the Shayla? The Shayla, uh, in, in the, the Emirati culture, they call the Shayla, it's, it's, uh, the, it's more, it, it's a hijab, but it's a lighter scarf that they wear with their abaya. So it's pretty much a hijab, except they call it a Shayla, and it's usually a much lighter, thinner material that will match the abaya. It's usually black, but sometimes, you know, they are so fashionable with the abayas here. I'm like, hey, girl, hey. The burkinis are cute, everything, like very fashionable. It's like, I still, I'm still gonna have the tradition. I'm still gonna stay modest, but definitely, you know, show some personality and stuff like that. So yeah, that's yeah. And you know, Shazia, I recently had Shazia on as a guest on the, as on one of the episodes and she's she's always so amazing to have. And uh, uh, we were talking about, uh, about the freedoms of topics. Uh, that as female comics, especially as like brown or Muslim or, you know, uh, comics or female comics, the kind of topics we are allowed to or ex are expected to speak of and the topics we can speak of. Um, do you like, Shazia, like what is, I mean, look, you've been doing comedy longer than any one of us. I mean, I mean, because that's why I call you an OG. Uh, but, you know, for you, it's like, do you think like, what were the topics in the beginning that you could you couldn't talk about, but now you have seen the kind of evolution of comedy in for females, where you see where you're like, oh, I have a lot more freedom to talk about this where I didn't have it before. Well, in the in the I think if you're a brown comic, if you're a brown comedian of any background, you are always expected to talk about issues 
yeah. or you know uh, if you're a muslim comic oh why did 911 happen um why is there are your brothers terrorists oh is that your religion I mean, we always, when a Muslim comic, a brown comic comes on stage, white people, white critics, and I've had this myself, um, expect you to address certain issues, talk right. about what's in the news. Um, we want to hear what you have to say about immigration, terrorism. And sometimes when I've gone on stage and I've talked about um, removing my mustache, they haven't been interested because I'm not I'm not following the agenda yeah. and the thing is um, you always have to do as a comedian what you want to do what you want to say because it's you you're the comedian you have to say what you think if you go go on stage always trying to address what you think other people want you to say you will never do a true piece of work because you will always be trying to impress other people and living up to other people's expectations. There is a, a problem in, in that being a, being a minority comic, you are, or a black comic or a Jewish comic, that you are always expected to speak for your people and speak for your background. And at the end of the day, you can only speak for yourself. Yeah. You cannot speak for a whole race of people or a whole religion because everybody is an individual. And yeah. part of the racism that is in the world is that we are not seen as individuals. All black people are seen as the same. All Muslims are seen as the same. All Jews are seen as the same. And you can only be specific to your own life and your own point of view. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, 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 I totally agree. I feel like, you know, uh, for me, I've, I've, one of the things that I've noticed is that uh, if I'm doing like, a, you know, a Muslim comedy show or like a Middle Eastern or South Asian comedy show, uh, and God forbid, if I bring up even the slightest sexual topic, God forbid, I am just pegged as that. So every person after that would be like, I loved your set, but oh my God, you're so dirty. I'm like, I made one dick joke, one. My entire set is shadowed by one dick joke. Like, what the fuck? You know, like, everything is always about, like, oh, oh, my God, you're an edgy comic. I remember once doing a show. It was an all-Muslim. It was, like, all these Muslim, young Muslim uh, folks, 20s to 30s. Uh, and I started doing set, and, and the guys were loving it. And some of the hijabi sisters were really upset. Why they were upset, I don't know why they were upset. Uh, and then one of them after the show came and confronted me. And she was like, I just want to let you know, you're not funny. I just want to let you know that. And I was well, like, I'd like to let you know that nobody is worse than the hijabi. The hijabis are getting, the hijabis, the hijabis are having more cock than anybody. And yet you mention it once and they come down on you. It's because they're the ones doing it. Listen. And you know what? God bless this. Get as much dick as you want. There is plenty of dick to go around. God bless. Have at it. But like, just this need to go and tell somebody because you feel insecure or like whatever. Like, I'm not like I'm not taking any dick away from you. Like that, your dick is your dick, and my dick is my dick. Like, God bless this, you know? But this there is enough dick going around the world. Way no. more, more than enough dick. There is plenty of and Mona, dick. let me just be clear here. Yeah. There is halal dick available. Halal dick. A halal dick. Halal dick is of available. Many Muslims in the world. There's plenty of halal plenty, dick. Plenty. Plenty. Hashtag halal dick. Okay. Halal. I, think, I hope it trends on Twitter. I really hope it does. Uh because we need that. And I had this conversation with this Adabi sister and I didn't I didn't get mad at her. And I was just like, I was like, can I ask you something? I was like, why are you so angry? And she was like, what? She was like, why are you so mad? I was like, do you think it's possible that maybe something I said reminds you of some of your insecurity or something that reflects in you? I was like, maybe it has nothing to do with me, maybe it has something to do with you. And she like literally just stopped for a moment and was just like, you know what? I think you're right. This has nothing to do with you. This has to do with my own stuff. It's also a case of if I can't have it, you can't have it. Right, right. If I can't have it, you. But it's also like, but you're not a stand-up comic. Like nobody's stopping you from doing stand-up comedy. Get on stage. But a lot of you suck while wearing a hijab. Go for it. 
a lot of times these girls resent you for having the courage to get on stage and be a comedian in the first place. Sure. They wish that they could have done that or they wish they can do that, but they can't. So they attack you because it's actually really mm -hmm. what they want to do or what they want to say, but they don't, yeah. they don't have the courage or the freedom to be able to. So yeah. I, I actually, instead of getting angry now, I just kind of humor them and I, yeah. I just use the material, yeah. For sure. And I'm, I've, I've had a different, I, I have a very different side of, of that because in, it's interesting because sometimes in the States or in Europe, um, if I do some jokes about being married to a Muslim, uh, it's a bit more sensitive. Um, and then over here, the women actually, um, we, we, we started a comedy school, so we do a lot of workshops. We started Funny Girls, which is an all-female group. And these women that I think normally would be, oh, I can't do it. And some of them, sometimes their families don't know. And we do have options of venues that you know, aren't at clubs or serve alcohol. So we do have some alcohol. And a lot of women are saying what they want to say through their own voices in kind of a positive way. And it's amazing to see because I, I hadn't really seen that before. And I had similar experiences to like you were both saying. And then all of a sudden now it's like there there is this courage and, and there is this more like, you know what, I want something to say, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna take a risk. And many of the girls know they don't they don't want to be a professional comedian by most of them, no, but they're like, I wanna do this for fun. I wanna express my creativity. I, I don't wanna just focus on business or focus on this. Um, but there is this this really interesting an exciting time um, for hijabi females in, in the world in the Middle East right now. There's more and more coming up. Lebanon right now, forget about it. They have some women that are like going for it. Egypt, um, the UAE is a, we, we're still like, you know, they're still kind of like, uh, it's very halal, it's very halal. But then you'll go to Jordan, you got women like just, just kicking ass and taking names. So they're coming up. And yeah. interesting enough, and out of the Middle East, which is kind of cool because the, the stereotype is the opposite. That it's like, no, once you leave the Middle East, you have much more open minds. But sometimes there's more pressure because you have like, like my, my, my dad's family is Italian immigrants. So I'll use them as an example. And they would always say, back in, back in the old country. Oh my God, no, you gotta do this, you gotta do this. But they remember Italy in the 50s, in the 40s. Italy right. isn't like that now. That's Southern right. Italy is not like that anymore. They have this mentality that they're like, oh, you have to, you know, make this positive. You have to remember that, you know, the whole I walk to school in the snow up a hill with no shoes to get to school. Shut up and get on the freaking bus. Like we've all heard these immigrant parent stories, but they're stuck in that past era. Yeah, and now it's like so. I met a lot of Middle Eastern like comics, and they're like, "Oh man, my dad talks about Egypt all the time." But then they go back to Egypt, and they're like, "This is not. This is not at all what I've been taught." So right. it's kind of interesting to hear what you guys are saying, like in the UK and the USA. And I'm sitting here like, actually, women are women would surprise you. They might. I think some hijabis here would surprise. You. But see, that's exactly, that's exactly why I wanted to have this panel, right? Where I have somebody in UK, I'm in LA, you're in Dubai. Because when we sit here and the kind of shows we do and the kind of crowds we come across, I think that there may be a lot more conservative, maybe the ones that you come across, Tina, you know, because because they're a lot, they've moved on. The, the, the Middle Eastern or the South Asian people that are here, they're still living in the time when they left the country, which might have been the 60s or the yeah. 70s or the 80s. So their mentality yeah. is still there and they pass that on to their children versus you who's living there in real time is seeing all these big changes. And you're like, well, that's not what I'm experiencing. Yeah. That's not the conversation we're having, you know? Yeah, I mean, but you know, to me, these, these female comics or like even yourself, do you have like certain topics where you're like, okay, I can't talk about that. I can't talk about uh, po local politics. I can't talk about that. I can't talk about religion. Uh, I can't like, there are certain um, topics that are forbidden. I, I, 
as an individual, I choose not to dig too deep into religion. Yeah. Just that's a personal choice, you know. Um, I just there's, there's enough there's enough war, there's enough hate uh, about religion. So for me, I'll I'll make stuff about myself, my family, but I I don't really dig that deep. I'm like I kind of leave it there. Um, in terms of local politics, yeah, we definitely don't do jokes about our government. Um, but I don't really need to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at Trump right now and I'm like, yeah, there's, I don't have a reason to complain. Right. I, you know, the things that I would have complained about have been getting progressively better. Um, but, you know, I, I don't, I don't have a reason to anyways. So yeah. that's kind of, yeah, no, that's, and, and definitely the UAE, like last year, um, they had, uh, it was the year of tolerance and they were very, very vocal about nobody making fun of other's religion. If you made any type of hate comments about someone's race, uh, about their religion, you will get arrested. It is very, they, they're they taking it very, very seriously right now. Yeah. And uh, you know, a local guy was just arrested for doing some racial slurs online. So it's, it's everybody, it's not just expats. Yeah. But they're really trying to be like, no, 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 we need to live. In, in this peaceful country, and we're not going to take this crap. So it's kind of like I, I don't, as a comic, I naturally don't want to talk about religion, but mm -hmm. also in my environment right now, where you know people there, there are there is a small Jewish community. There, there is Hindu temples. There is all kinds of different religions. Like I said, over two hundred nationalities here. Um, I, in this environment. It wouldn't work well, and you have to know your audience. People would be uncomfortable and be like, "Oh gosh, I don't, I, I don't know." So it wouldn't work, even if I personally wanted to do it. It just wouldn't work in this environment to begin with. And there's jokes that, like, I, I would only do in New York. It wouldn't work other places. You guys know, you know what I mean. So, right, right. I mean, look, I'm a New York comic. So no, I get it. I'm a New York comic, so I, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Stuff I mean, we do in New York. I went to the UK and I was like, oh shit, I don't even understand his dialect, but people are laughing. So he's he's good. I know he's funny. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, in Scotland, I'm like, I think this is English. I don't know. He's Jordy. I, I, I love his facial expressions. Everybody else is laughing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's funny because when I when I came to Dubai and when I did the show, uh, one of the first things I was told right up front was that I cannot talk about local politics. I cannot, yeah, yeah. Uh, I cannot, I mean, yeah, that's that's a <laughs> but, but you know, Chazia no, knows, yeah. Chazia knows that Chazia, that's a, I think that's the luxury that you and I get to have living in the West is that yeah. nobody can come and tell us that you can or cannot do. I mean, when I went to Dubai, I nearly got arrested uh, because um, <laughs> they said, we, we, they said oh, before I went, I, I did a show downstairs at the Moven Pick Hotel. Uh, they used to have a comedy well, night at, at the Moven Pick Hotel in Dubai. Uh -huh. And they used to have a comedy night there. And it was at the nightclub and stuff. Um, and um, they used to have, bring Western comedians over. But when I got there, they said, you can't talk about race, religion, sex. Um, I, I mean, I had no act left, really. Um, I had nothing left to talk about. Uh, <laughs> And um, I mentioned I did one joke. I, I did one joke uh, about I said, oh, you know, all men are pigs, uh, something like that, especially Muslim men. Uh, but that's OK, because I don't eat pork, something like that. And, and anyway, 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 um, I had the police come to the hotel. The police came to the hotel saying that some people had wow. been offended. They'd, they'd been offended and they made a complaint about me. I'd done sexually inappropriate jokes. And I had to tell them, I toned it down that night. You should really appreciate it because I toned it down. It could have been a lot worse. I told them, yeah, this, yeah. it could have been a lot worse. I said, I, I just did one joke. Yeah. And they just, they wrote me a letter complaining about my behavior and said that I'd be banned the next night if I didn't change my act. Yeah. Wow. wow. And, and what year was this? This was, was, at, the, this this was at, 
this was at the Moven Pick Hotel in Dubai in about 2012, 2013. Wow. So not, not that mm. long ago, really. Not yeah. really that long ago. Yeah, I think there must have been somebody in the audience that, yeah, that, that I don't know. Because the thing is, is like there's um, there's a, a British group here called um, uh, a woman runs the Laughter Factory, and their their whole thing is bringing a slice of home yeah. to the UAE. So they yeah. specifically bring British comics for like twenty years now. So it's yeah. kind of a known thing. People yeah. know if I, uh, you know, if I want some good British comedy, if I want to get that vibe, that that club vibe and people like she, they, they bring in really great comics from the UK. And I have a feeling you are one of them because they did the move and pick. So the majority of the people who go there, they know what they're going to. Um, yeah. Like our side, for us, do the opposite we're, we're trying to focus more on not just bringing people in we're trying to like build it from the ground up to kind of balance that out yeah. but we've had like Chappelle here we have Cat Williams come here <laughs> right. Yeah. right but then so, just, no, no. But to be clear, yeah but to be clear Chappelle and Cat touch talk a lot about race and being black in America which I think would be very acceptable. You know, they don't really go, they, they touch a little bit. Kat definitely talks a lot more about politics than Chappelle does, uh, but they mainly talk about race, which I think is a lot more, uh, you know, acceptable topic, I would think, in the Middle East yeah. versus, you know, um, versus like, you know, me or Shazia, where we're talking about, you know, misogyny in the Muslim culture or Kellen calling men whatever we're calling yeah. them. And then they're like, oh my God, my feelings are hurt. My but family. also because Dubai is considered to be an Islamic state. Yes, yes, and, yes, and, yes. You know, yes, and, uh, it's, and it's the same if you went to Iran or Pakistan, where they are considered Islamic states. So if you are doing jokes about Islam, yeah. whether they are religious or not, a lot of people take offense to that because yeah, they feel much. they should yeah. because it is an Islamic country. Yeah. But... Yeah. The people, the actual people, I remember performing in Pakistan and it was like a thousand people in a tent outside. And I toned it down because I was worried about offending people. But actually, they started shouting, go further, go further. They wanted me to talk um, more about sex, more about religion. That's what the people want. Yes. But obviously, the comedians are scared to do that because yeah, yeah. something happens, the people are not going to help me, you know, if I get arrested or somebody tries to kill me. But yeah. actually, the people in that in those places, they do want more. And 100%. they do want new things from the West. 100%. I 100% I, I agree with you. I, um, I think, I think, I think because there is so much like uh, you know the the sexual repression and the you can't talk about religion you can't talk about this can't talk about that people are like dying to hear this kind of stuff people are dying to be like tell me the truth tell me tell me that you feel the same way as i feel like tell me that i i have experienced uh doing shows where um i did a show for a pakistani mela for eid uh that was last year that brought me out to new york uh and holy hell what a shit show that was uh so these are like people who are like straight up Pendu, okay? These are like the pretty Pendu crowd. I don't know if you know what Pendu is, Mina. Uh, you know, we're talking about like villager backward, stuff. Backward. Backward. Yeah, very backwards, okay? Um, and I get up wow. and the crowd is about upwards of like 2,000, right? It's a big crowd and it's outside and it's raining and there's like Mela going on on the side and they want me to do stand-up comedy. I'm like, yo, I don't know how this is gonna work out but I'm gonna do the best I can, okay? So I literally jump off stage and I get into the crowd because they're so far away from me. I'm having a hard time connecting to them. So I jump off stage and I go up and I start talking to the people. I start doing crowd work. Because they're not, I'm not really connected to them. They're not connected to me. And I was like, it doesn't matter what comes out of my mouth right now. If they don't feel connected to me, it doesn't matter what I say. So I was just connected to the people. And all, of a sudden, all these young guys were sitting in the front and they were laughing and we were having a good time. I was roasting them and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, I hear the women, a couple of few women, start chanting for me to get off the stage. <sighs> they're like, get off the stage. And I was like, so the guys are like, no, you're so funny, keep going. And the women are like, no, get off the stage. 
And I'm like, what the fuck is going on right now? I would think it would be the other way around where the women would be encouraging me and the men would be telling me to get off the stage. And yeah. it was like such like, a mm -hmm. for me. And I was like, okay, either this is about either this is about like age where the women are slightly older and the young guys are younger and they're enjoying it because they're a bit of a woke crowd, so they're into it. And mm -hmm. yeah. and then of course, I started roasting the women because I was like, fuck it. Like the gloves yeah, are yeah, yeah. You're gonna talk, yeah, shit, you're gonna talk shit right back, right? Yeah. Uh, and I started talking shit. And at one point I had this Indian friend of mine and he was there, he was also he also helped promote the show. And he was standing on the side. I'm like, give it up for my my, my Indian friend because it was uh, you know, uh, he was standing on the side, and these bitches started booing him because he's Indian. <gasps> I was, oh, I was like, are you for real right now? I was like, okay, this brother right here has like help, like bring me here. Like, you know, I mean, this kind of prejudice exists. And the fact that, do you think like Desi crowd or like Muslim crowds are just a little too fucking sensitive? Shazia, what do you think? Well, I think um, comedy is new to the Desi crowd. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like black comedians or Jewish comedians who have a history of comedy behind them for years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, comedy to the Muslim crowd, it's new to them. And they are easily offended because nobody's joked about these things with them before. So they just go, oh my God, I'm offended, I'm offended. But they don't actually know why they're offended. You know, some, people, some of them are offended and they don't know why. Some That's of them right. are offended on other people's behalf. Some yeah. of them are yeah. the worst. And some of them are offended because <laughs> other people are not offended enough. And right. then, yeah. I'm like, right. if you ask these people, why are you offended? They'll just say, oh, 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 oh I'm I don't know. I I'm offended. I'm offended. That's why. They yeah. can't actually explain why they are offended. They That's just what... feel they should be. Yes. And yeah. I think that, you know, in many ways, why our race, our religion is still not evolving. Mm -hmm. is partly because of the sense of humor thing yeah. is that when the jews and the black people got their sense of humor they yeah. really started to make an impact culturally in the world yeah. and we haven't because we, our sense of humor is still is still stagnated really and we, we take everything so seriously yeah and until we can laugh at ourselves and our situation we will not evolve and we will not have the same status in the world yeah. that other cultures have. That's right. I 100% I, I yeah. agree with you. Mina, have you ever had a situation where you went out, you got up on stage and you started talking about a certain thing and then you started getting like, you know, got, started getting heckled by, you know, women or just guys, like trying to heckle you for something? Well, I think that, you well, know, you're over here, here well, you're also there, 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 there's, huge, there's huge, huge Daisy community uh, here, yeah. huge, more more than any other nationality. So there's there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, specific, like, we're going to have an Indian comic night, we're going to have a Pakistani comic night. And just one quick thing is what I noticed, just to piggyback off of what you were saying, it's like sometimes a lot of comics would come from India or we'd even have like uh, some students take the workshops and it was the same joke mm -hmm. on repeat. And I'm like, did they all just take, are they all just writing the same, like just hacking from each other? And then it took me time to realize it's because they're safe. They yeah. know these jokes are going to the laugh yes. and they're not going to offend people. Yeah. So I'm going to tell it in my own way. Yeah. And then it clicked up. It's because it's safe. Yes. And it's 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 there's there's this fear of originality because oh I don't want to rock the boat too much. So you'll see these very similar voices across the board. And every now and then you'll get this new voice that is really saying something that you're like, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's really kind of interesting. And in terms of getting um, some shit from the audience, usually it, it, the audiences here tend to be pretty supportive because, like you're saying too, it, 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 it's it's very new. It's very new in the Middle East. It's very new still in the Arab community, in the Arab community. 
So yeah. a lot of times I have people come up to me after a show like this is the first time, this is the first time I have seen stand-up comedy in real life, mashallah, oh my god. A lot of them are, are so happy to be there. They don't know the fucking friends away. They're calling their friends. They're the whole thing. You're like, put phones away, people. So sometimes when you interact with them, that's when sometimes people they just want to talk too much, or sometimes they're like, don't make me look stupid. Don't make me look stupid. No, don't make me look stupid. So the crowd work, you have to be careful about. <laughs> <laughs> and you that's the only time that sometimes like i i've done crowd work with someone who did not was not happy with it did not want to look bad and yeah of peers, yeah and just kind of got so you make you, you finish the joke and then you move on so yeah. now i'm a little more selective with my crowd work that's what i kind of like <laughs> i mean what and I want one time a woman did, it was, um, I did an all women, because there's actually a lot of all female events here, which are awesome. Not, yeah. <laughs> you really let your hair down. I was shocked. I was like, hey, how did I not know? Like, the, like these, these women's events were so much fun. Yeah. And the laughter, they the, the women laugh so much louder when it's just women. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, and I could a lot more, a yeah. lot more. Yeah, and when it was just yeah, this one time we were at this event and it was a mix, and I had said a joke and I used inshallah in it, and this woman was so mad at me, so mad at me that you are not Muslim, you are not Arab, you should not be allowed to say this word. You should not make fun of this word. I said, no, I wasn't making fun of it. I was using it in context. No, 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 no. She was just very angry and she started petitioning the organizer. Don't hire her again. He is talking about religion. And I was like, but I'm not talking about religion. I said, Mishalba, which means God willing. I know what the word means. And I was making fun of people who use it in the wrong way. Why are you so offended by that? It was very, so we had a very intense conversation and it came to the conclusion that I'm allowed to do that joke in front of Arabs only, but not in front of expats because then they're going to use that joke against them. Interesting. I mean, I mean, to me, she sounds like she just hasn't had dick in a while, but that's just me. Uh, she, she just sounds like a doesn't fuck her often, uh, but you know, maybe she just needs a little bit of oh, so so I, I actually, you know, the, the, best, <laughs> thing, the best thing aunties that we had here, uh, I did a show last uh, last year called uh, Desi, Desi Girls Night Out, and we packed the room out. It was about like 300 women who showed up, right? It was packed. Um, and it was amazing. We had like a fantastic time. We had Indians, we had Pakistanis, we had Arabs, we had like everybody showed up, right? And um, I, I went up and I did this joke, and this is based on a true story, uh, that I performed the Umrah when I was uh, when I was uh, 11 years old. You know, I went with my family and performed three Umrahs. Uh, and um, and the last Umrah, they like um, they didn't tell me that how intense the process was. Uh, that I ended up shitting my pants in the you know as I was like trying to run out of uh, to kind of end my umrah because the process is so long I you know my tummy started grumbling and I started like ended up crapping my pants um and I tell the story and then the, these Pakistani aunties took it to Facebook to bitch about the fact that I was making fun of religion no. Nah. How, what does shitting my pants have anything to do with religion, right? The moment they hear Saudi Arabia, Umrah, Islam, like, oh, she is making that's what I That's religion. what I meant when I said they're just offended because they feel they should be. Or right. they are offended yeah. because on other people's behalf. They don't know why they're offended. Right. Like, take the time to this listen. The trigger, word, the trigger words that they've been taught, you know, that, that oh, no, 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 stay away from it. So, yeah, they <laughs> just, like, listen to the context. Like, what is the context that she's saying it? And and it's, it was interesting because all the young Pakistani, uh, you know, uh, audience members all came to my rescue. They were like, okay, are the Desi aunties complaining already? That show was amazing. I mean when i started comedy the same thing happened to me um, yeah. i didn't get my pants but what happened was 
I did a story. <laughs> I did a story <laughs> about how I did Umrah twice. And when I went to Mecca, I was walking around the Kaaba and somebody pinched my bum. Because, you know, in, in, in Mecca, everybody's pushing and shoving yeah. each other. Yeah. And I thought somebody had shoved me, but they hadn't. Somebody had pinched my bum. And I ignored it. And then, and then it happened again. And I knew somebody, people do that in Mecca. Yes, they do. Shot me in, yes, they yes, pinch they their asses. Someone pinched my bum. I made a joke of it and I said it was the hand of God. Now, <laughs> I got a lot of, I got a lot of um, abuse. I got a lot of, I got a, people death threats. You know, it was a joke. But I said, the point I'm making is this happens to women in Mecca. Yes. They will never speak up about it. That's and you know what? The minute I did that joke, loads of women came forward and said that the same thing could happen to them. Sure. Oh, that happened to me, that happened to me. But there were some guys that went, oh, you're making this up. Yeah. You're lying. You're just trying to take the, make jokes about Islam. Mm -hmm. No, I wasn't. Yeah. But it's yeah. like uh, any time a woman wants to say something, then they have to silence her. That's right. Oh, she's anti-Islam. She's yeah. anti-Islam, yeah. making jokes about Islam. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that if a man had done that joke, he yeah. wouldn't have been silenced in the same way so when you talk about misogyny, no. misogyny yeah. that is misogyny in comedy hardcore i mean hardcore can i say something so i uh you know i make a lot of posts and i make jokes and stuff like that and um i i have noticed that i can say the exact same thing uh, and then i will get a bunch of shit for it and then i will see a, a, a muslim male coming the exact same joke and be totally applauded and praised for it right Totally applauded and praised for it. And then, and sometimes I go to the male comments, I'm like, hey man, you got applauded for, and I got shit for the exact same thing. Like, don't you think for a moment it would have been a good idea to come and try to come to my defense or try to come and like help a sister out? Like, you know, we're like battling the same battle. So, and that brings me to the next topic of in the, in the comedy world, the Middle Eastern and South Asian comic who are American raised or UK raised, um, they're, they, I feel like on the surface, they pretend to be very progressive and very like, oh, we're totally woke. Oh yeah, women power. Oh yeah, racism is bad. But they have no problem making like jigs at you, no problem making misogynistic comments at you and be like, oh, I was just kidding. <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> Do you experience that? Like Mina, I don't know. What is that like for you in Dubai? I mean, I feel like Mina, because you're also a New Yorker, you're also white or Italian, that yeah. also kind of gives you that extra kind of buffer in the sense that, that you won't get the same level of wrath that maybe Shazia and I would. Would you agree with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I think too, there's, um, I, I, I think one of you were saying that a lot of times women aren't confident or yeah. they fear confrontation. I'm the opposite. <laughs> I'm not afraid of confrontation. Um, so I, I, I came in very strong uh, with that. So, so I think that I, I really own my views, and and I do speak out uh, uh, against certain things. If I see something, I will call it out. Mm -hmm. And I think also, but what helped is I, I had met my husband very early on, so I kind of represent the expat, but also a female, a strong female comedian. And my husband is local. He's in many different dialects of Arabic. He also speaks Hindi. Um, he, he's, he knows the culture here. He knows South Asia. Like he knows he knows everybody here. He really loves the the country and everything. So we kind of balance each other out. Yeah. Um, and it definitely because we're a team. I, I definitely have. I, I'm blessed. I know that if I was just here by myself running a comedy company it would be very different and for him I think it would also be very different but because the two of us we were, we're very strong together yeah. and it's, it's happened before where I've said something a joke that did not translate properly and sometimes I'll, I'll do um, some jokes in Arabic sometimes in Hindi because it depends on the audience and somebody might start to get offended and he'll be there to have my back. And he'll be like, actually, this is what she was saying. Mm -hmm. And yes, she is a woman, but this is why she's saying this. So he has my back. And sometimes it's the opposite for him. He'll say something that will 
a, a woman will get, oh, I can't believe you did that. And I'm like, no, but why are you getting offended? He didn't say that. You thought that he actually said something else. Right. So for us, we like you guys were saying, you people gotta support each other and yeah. not just half support each other when it's there convenient for them. Right. No, no, no. The male have to they have to fucking stand up for the women. And that I, I've seen it so many times where the guys don't. And the women are just like, what the fuck? I have to just be, I, I'm like the only female on the lineup. Right. And you're going to give me all the time and not have my back? Be, no, right. fuck that. Yeah. So I mean, that, I, 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 I've been lucky on that sense. But I think the, I think the takeaway is that we need to get a husband. Uh, I think that is the takeaway um, from yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> husband is allowed three. Husband is allowed three. Afterwards, we can talk afterwards. I don't know. I don't know. Inshallah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't really have that. Uh, we don't really have the luxury between. Uh, we don't really have that luxury. I, I think. I think the great thing. I think maybe for like me and Shazia is that we can very easily tell male comics to fuck off and uh, not be in fear of getting banned somewhere or, or getting acid attacks thrown on us or have be shot. Like we don't kind of have that. Not that I, I, I don't think that would happen in Dubai either, uh, but we don't have that. I recently had a comedian who lives in Pakistan and uh, she's a she lives in, she's a Cindy comic uh, and she's very funny. In the so I discovered her and I was like, hey, would you like to come and do a set? And she was like, oh, most of my set is in Urdu, but I want to like prepare a set in English. I'm like, yeah, no problem. And she came and did a set and she was awesome. She was really fantastic. And she really started talking about topics that she's like, I could never do these jokes in Pakistan because I would get so much shit for it. But I'm so glad that I can do this with you and you gave me this opportunity to have this conversation. So I feel like to me, comedy is um, comedy is freedom. Like, I don't think there are any, like people can get offended and you don't have to listen to comedy. You don't have to watch. But I feel like as comics, you have the right to talk about pretty much whatever, whatever the fuck you want. You, Chazia? Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the whole point of doing comedy. You can say whatever you want. Yeah. As long as it's funny. Yes. And you can say whatever. That's the whole point of it. You can say anything. Yeah. As, as long as there's a joke at the end of it. As long as you, as long as you, you make someone laugh or whatever. It's, it's your freedom. You've got the mic. Right. You know, you've been, you've been brave enough to get on that stage and say what you want. It's it's absolutely your freedom. And um, I think that's why it's the only place in the world, really, where you can say what you want without being censored. That's right. You know, if you're a politician, if you're an activist, if you're any of these things, you do have to consider um, being politically correct, uh, talking to your audience, saying things, saying not saying certain things, not saying other things. But in comedy... You can say whatever the fuck you want and make a joke of it and make people laugh. And that that's brilliant. Yeah. That's the whole reason why we do this. Right. For sure. I mean, to me, comedians are modern day philosophers. I mean, there's no more Socrates. There's uh, Shazia Mirza and Mila Lichione. You know, they're like. But the problem is like we have Trump now who also says whatever the fuck he wants. Right. And there's no yeah. joke at the end of it. There's no oh, joke at God. the end of it. That's right. That's right. Now, and that's and that's. But people look at him and they think, well, he's saying that I can say that. Right. He yeah. he said that about black people. He said that about Muslims. I can do that. That's right. And that is causing racism in the yes. world. Yeah. And hatred, and and people being attacked on the streets because Trump has legitimized this form of yeah. stand-up comedy, but it's not stand-up comedy. He's the fucking president. No, that's correct. That's correct. We're not at a club uh, and there's no two drink minimum. Like there's no two drink minimum. I, I don't know what it's like in Dubai, Mina, but we have two drink minimums here. Um, I you know. know. <laughs> yeah, put your card down. Um, I, I just love it. Sometimes you go to comedy clubs and uh, they're like, I'm like, I don't drink. And they're like, all right, just get two bottles of water. They're like, how much is the water? They're like $5 each. You're like, oh my God. What the hell? What'd you put uh -huh. in the water? $5 nachos. <laughs> Why is this bottle of water $10? My goodness, it's so expensive. I I just think um, we we have uh, we have certain comedy clubs in LA, uh, which I shall not name, but uh, they have uh, this thing uh, where uh, they recently got in a lot of heat because they went online and said that they can't find female comics, okay? 
Um, do you know how many female comics I personally have booked just in the past five years of me doing my Minority Report shows? Well over 200 to 250 comics. Easy. Yeah. Hands down. Like, not even a question. Uh, and this comedy club had the audacity to come out. And by the way, it's owned by a Middle Eastern guy, right? So you look at that and you're just like, what the fuck is going on here? How is it that you are claiming yourself to be so woke and so progressive and then at the same time being so misogynistic and just acting as if, oh, like just totally being turned into, I can't find female comics. And I'm like, give me a call. I'll give you 20 on the top of my head. I'll give you 20 like that. You know, Mina, I mean, when you do comedy in the comedy, are you usually the only female comic? I mean, first of all, how many female comics are even in Dubai? Well, we've, geez, it, it's, you know, it, the thing is, is like, uh, we'll, we'll have many come out in a year, but a lot of times they don't continue. A lot of comics in general, because then they realize, oh shit, I have to write. <laughs> I have to write. I have to get up on stage. I have to actually perfect. Like, I feel like there's this impatience that it's like you go from like zero to hero really fast, especially if you take a workshop. You know what I mean? It's like, you're gonna get coached, you're gonna have this set and and you're gonna be like, oh my God, I got the buzz. But then he, you know, making it, you know, consistent is very hard for whether it's men or women. It's, it's very, very inconsistent. So we'll have like, in Funny Girls, we'll, we'll have different, you know, we'll have different lineups, sometimes every year, sometimes every few years. Um, but we've had hundreds, we've had hundreds of women, but not at a professional level. They don't all continue at a professional level. There's, there's, there's much less in the UAE. I'm probably the most consistent and only full-time professional comedian. Wow. Um, I, so it's not, it, it's it, as, even as a man, whether you're, you're a man or a woman, being a full-time comedian in the UAE is, is very hard. It's not yeah. impossible. Like yeah. we're we're living it, but it's it's not. There's not as many opportunities. You have to create the opportunities. Right. You have to build it yourself. You have to hustle, and you sounds know like, it's, it's sounds like American. Of, um, we are. <laughs> it sounds like comedy in Los Angeles. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not. It's it's. I think. I, I very rarely do you find uh like Middle Eastern or South Asian or Muslim comics, female comics, especially in LA who make a living doing this. Uh, you know, I know Shazi of course makes a living doing this. I make a living doing this. Uh, there's maybe, I don't even know how many more people, maybe one other comic or two other comics I know who make a living doing this that are female, but all of the, the rest are just men. They're all guys. They're all guys. Mm -hmm. I get all the love. They get all the breaks. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's all and online and online. Like, you know, I'm, I'm friends on Facebook, you know, you, you're friends with lots of other comics. They add you and, and stuff like that. So sometimes, you know, you go through your feed and people will be like, Hey, who are your favorite top 10 comedians of all time? And last week, someone put down who is the greatest uh, top 10, you know, physical comedians of all time. There was at least 500 comments and not one of them thought to say Lucille Ball or a female, like seriously? Like, and then I started thinking again, I'm just like, women are never included in these top 10 or top 20 of all time, this, this, and this. I never see them. I really, really, really don't. I really, I, I genuinely don't. Amy Schumer had come here to Dubai. The only time um, I've seen it is Margaret Cho. Margaret Cho, yeah, listed as one of the top 50 greatest comedians of all time in the Rolling Stone. Oh, good for her. Yeah. I would have thought it would have been Joan Rivers. I would think Joan Rivers would be oh, up there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Joan Rivers. She, 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 she started like. Joan Rivers. Joan Rivers was revolutionary. She was like groundbreaking. Yes. revolutionary yes, first was. woman to be, lead a chat show on American TV. They treated her so badly. Yes. You know, she was a oh. pioneer. Joan yes. Rivers was a pioneer. Yes. I mean, but Chad, you to me, you, to me, you're my Joan Rivers. Well, thank you. 
I mean, like you really are, and I'm not like pandering or well, like. If you, I mean, listen, listen there, there has to be somebody that does it first. Joan Rivers was the first Jewish woman. Who, I mean, uh, Ellen DeGeneres was the first gay woman. Yeah. You know, Wanda Sykes was one of the first black women wearing Whoopi Goldberg. There yeah. always has I to be Wanda. somebody, somebody from your background to yeah. show you you can also do it. Yes. If you don't see people that look like you on TV. You will always think, well, that's not for me. Yes. You have true. to see people that look like you reflected back at you on TV. Yeah. And that's where and that's where we uh, women, brown women, have struggled because there aren't enough of us on TV. There aren't enough of us in comedy. Mm -hmm. um, so we always thought we can't do it. There isn't anybody doing it like us. Yes, right. Agreed. So somebody has to take a risk. Somebody has to do it. Um. But, we have a uh, we have a uh, our uh, third guest joining us because uh, she had a prior commitment and she's here. Uh, she has been seen on uh, Conan O'Brien. I mean, I just watched her set. She's hysterical. I've been following her for a while. She's actually uh, calling from Austin, uh, and she's awesome. Uh, Maggie May, Maggie, hello, welcome, Maggie. Hey, hey. how are you guys? Hey, Maggie. we got Shazi and Nina here. Shazi in the UK, Nina's in Dubai. Oh, I'm actually uh, in from LA. Oh, nice, nice. Are uh, in from I LA? Know. Are you? Uh, are you sorry, yeah. LA? I'm originally from Austin, but I moved to LA a few years back. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, am I frozen, by the way? Yes. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it just, uh, <laughs> it just froze. Me. It's like you are not worthy. It's better. I don't know what happened. Goddamn technology, man! I don't know what well, I don't know what's going on over here. Am I still frozen? No, you're okay now. Am I okay? Okay, okay. You're like kung fu movie. You're like a kung fu movie. Yeah. Kung fu. Oh, there we are. Yay! Okay. All right. Sweet. Back in business. Like you're not, like a Maggie, double over. You're a double over yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maggie, we were talking about uh, a lot of uh, we were talking about misogyny and the. Uh, you know, just kind of global misogyny, but we were also talking about it in the South Asian, Middle Eastern. Uh, but you know, Shadia was talking about actually Trump and how he has given so much carte blanche kind of access to racists for people to be blatantly racist and to be blatantly misogynistic. Uh, you know, I mean, look, I was I'm in West Hollywood. I look to I live two blocks from the Melrose from Melrose Avenue. Uh, and last Saturday uh, was like major protests that happened, and then there was you know the whole riots and everything that happened followed it. So I was like in like in the middle of the war zone, uh, like having like massive PTSD, having grown up under a dictatorship in Pakistan, and I was like having like these kind of flashback moments uh, while trying to do a comedy show for Stanford University online. So I was like, is there a gun that fits in my mouth uh, that I can have right now? Uh, because holy hell, this is a fucking nightmare right now. Um, I mean, Maggie, what about you? Like, look, you're, you know, you're, you're a comic who lived in Austin and now you're in LA. How, how has, how has the whole protest and rise, how has that affected you? And I want to hear like your thoughts on it. Um, I, I'll just say this. I've been in my house. I'm immunosuppressed. Um, I just don't have the luxury of going out, you know, a bunch. I'm, you know, quarantining that level. Um, we all know that, that, that the protests are necessary and I just refuse to entertain any further discussion. Like we know these protests are necessary. We yep. can re we saw what happened. We see what's going on. And I just, at this point, refuse to engage in any other kind of uh, argument or marketplace of ideas or devil's advocacy. We all see what's going on. We all know what's going on. And you guys are all smart, rational women. We all, you know, we all see the, the necessity for this. So, I mean, Agreed. You know, um, I don't know if you guys have been following this on Twitter. Uh, Maggie, you probably won't, but I think Shazi and Mina would. Uh, so Priyanka Chopra, who has now become a pretty big star in America, uh, is married to Nick Jonas. And uh, she uh, went on Twitter and started tweeting that racism in America has to end. And I, I, and I respect that for her for saying that. However, uh, it's highly hypocritical uh, when Priyanka Chopra, who got paid millions of dollars, 
doing skin uh, bleaching and skin lightening cream commercials in India. Uh, and now she's kind of here and just kind of pandering and just trying to, you know, just trying to appear woke when we all fucking know she's not fucking woke. Um, have you, did you, you know, there's like this whole Bollywood hypocrisy that's happening. But they're like, oh yeah, oh my God, totally. I mean, there should not be any race against black people. And I'm a hundred percent in agreement of that. But then it's like, if that is indeed the case, and if you indeed feel this way, then why would you get paid millions of thousands of dollars promoting skin lightening, uh, you know, as if like light skin or fair skin is better than what you have, whether you're brown or black. Shazia? Well, um, as we all know that racism is not just about the color of one's skin. It is a deep seated prejudice towards a race of people that goes far deeper than the color of their skin. Um, and oh Priyanka Chopra, she did this advert for Garnier, which obviously she got paid millions and millions of dollars for. She wasn't thinking about a race of people, the prejudice towards people. She was just thinking about the money and promoting this, her own fame, her own money. And as we know, Mona, in our culture, uh, the lighter skinned a woman is, the more chance she has of getting married. Correct. And it's the same in black culture. Beyonce having lighter skin makes her more attractive, apparently. Yeah. It will get yeah. her onto the cover of a magazine more than maybe a dark skinned black woman would. And yeah. so we know that in our culture, it's more than just about the color of the skin. You know, it's about, being more attractive the whiter you are the more superior you are. the yeah. whiter you are the more attractive you are the yeah. more desirable you are the more successful you will be yeah. and so nobody in india and pakistan wants to be dark they yeah. want to be light so yeah. she was preaching really to people who are already vulnerable yeah who want to hear this who yeah. feel that if they buy this garnier mm. product and they use it on their skin their life will be better yes. they will get they will oh, get yeah. a husband they will mm. be richer they will ads, be more successful the ads over here the ads over here there are so many and it's like oh i need to go get this job they're not giving me a call back and then they use this lightning cream and like a week later they get the job like it is insane mm. i'm like how do people really believe this but when you're taught from a, a, a tiny girl being told this, that you need to lighten your skin, light your skin, of course you're gonna believe that. I had, I have twins, I have twin boys. I, as I said, my, my husband is is Arab and I'm Southern Italian, American, Native American Indian. I'm a funky mix. And our babies, I have two twin toddler boys. Uh, mashallah. And <laughs> one, of them, one of them is a lot taller than the other one. He's like half my height now. He's like two and a half and he's like three and a half feet tall. He's basically the same height as Kevin Hart, okay? <laughs> he's so, I, I call him taller Swift, but he's also darker than his brother. And the Indian aunties at the doctor's office have told me, they have pointed it out <laughs> and they've commented on it. They've said, don't don't let him go in, 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 in the shade. Keep him in the shade more. Don't let him go in the sun. Try to drink more milk. Um, try to do this. And I'm just like sitting there. And I and I at first I was like, is she joking? And I very quickly realized I'm like, no, they're they're being very very serious. Because um, you know, if one son is darker than the other, he'll feel less than, or he might not have as many. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's tough. You know. Mina, 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 Mina got stuck there. Um, I, Mina, Mina stuck. I don't know. She'll, she'll come through. Hopefully, she'll come through. Uh, I think she probably had the same thing that I did. Um, welcome to technology. Um, uh, I, I, my mom used to bleach my skin in Pakistan, and uh, I lived in a southern city called Karachi. And our summers are very hot, and I get very, very dark. And, um, and my mom would try to force me to drink. My mom would force me to drink milk. Oh, now I'm stuck. Great. Milk. Uh, yeah, milk. 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 Look yeah. at that. There it is. Um, I look like I'm having yeah. a stroke. Why do I look like I'm having a stroke? Do, don't I look like that? Um, I literally look like I'm having a stroke. Um, I'm having. A I'm having a fair, lovely stroke. Uh, that's what I'm having. Look at me. Where? Where is my? Where is my tube of fair and lovely? Dude, Shah Rukh Khan, who is the freaking biggest star of Bollywood, okay, 
He has been getting paid millions of dollars to promote skin bleaching, right? And then all these stars in Bollywood are going, I know I look like I'm having a seizure. Um, they, then they go on on Twitter and they were like, oh my God, we stand against racism. I'm like, dude, you're racist against your own fucking people. What are you talking about? Fix the shit mm -hmm. at home. Like fix your shit at home. Like what are you doing? You're trying to appear as woke, but you're not fucking woke. Like you're just pandering because you also have deep rooted racism, not only against black people, but also against mm -hmm. your own self, you know? Um, Maggie, Mike, Maggie, are you there? Maggie got frozen mm -hmm. too. Yeah. I think StreamYard is punishing Oh me. no, am I frozen? No, uh, you're a little frozen. Yeah, everybody's frozen now. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not frozen. Look at that. Damn, you And this is and this is a paid subscription. Imagine if it was for free. Just imagine. Oh. That. Imagine You're listening that. to ads by now. They'd be playing ads. <laughs> 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 get mad. Mad. I don't want dark and lovely. Just get out. I light and lovely. I want to be dark and lovely. Come on. I want to be dark. Listen, my mom freaks out every time she calls me, especially when summer rolls around. I love going in the summer. I love going in the in the sun and getting tan. I just love it because my skin glows and I love it. And my mom, right. she's like, get, get out of the sun. Get out of the sun. It is getting, you're getting too dark. And I was like, yes, it's beautiful. I love being this dark. I, I love how my skin glows in the, in the, in the freaking thing. Uh, Maggie, what about you? Like, I mean, you grew up in, uh, you grew up in the valley. You grew up in a pretty, uh, mostly white, uh, you know, white neighborhood, pretty white environment. What, you know, what was that like for you? I mean, did you ever experience any shit like this? Yeah, um, I'm also a first generation Nigerian. So um, I can also speak like color, like within the Nigerian community, being that we're a British colony, um, colorism is how they get us to hate ourselves. Yes. No, you know, even within uh, the black community, I mean, it's to like if you're a darker skinned person, you're a sidekick. Yeah. It's always the lighter skinned woman who's marrying the it, it's it's just strange to like see it as a pattern when you grow up as a kid like well how come this is always this way how come this is always that way like it's just strange to be able to pick up on that pattern yet yeah. those that are putting out the pattern are not realizing that we can see what they're doing right right absolutely i mean you know it, it's just like this global thing man where like the dark skin mm -hmm. is just like immediately just a notch down like it's an immediate notch down you know i mean i'm sorry that's, but I've that's seen the some white people. huh sorry that's the strength of white supremacy. that's the strength of white supremacy it's yeah. they try to make people feel like there's a junior membership that they can get to oh yeah. well you're not white but you're a light-skinned black person or you're a light-skinned you know uh indian person so we can kind of give you some of the uh some of the bells and whistles that we have not all of them that us white people have but you right. can kind of see what it would be like to be white and kind of permeate it that way it's just white supremacy being yeah. tricky and preserving itself right right absolutely i mean you know i'm first of all i'm very happy that the protests happened because they had been long time coming uh i am mm -hmm. very very happy you know i really believe that the the protests are happening in the way they're happening and it's a global thing i mean this is not a revolution this is an evolution and i'm so so fucking proud of it and i'm so happy that it happened and i was having this conversation with my neighbor last night they're latino and i was just like you know if it hadn't been caught on camera from start to finish the way it was um i don't think it would have had the same impact the way it had because listen we've had so many innocent black brothers and sisters in the past who've been murdered for no fucking reason but because we didn't have the full video people were like making all these assumptions people were saying dumb shit but because we have this from start to finish, we are looking at a straight up evolution. And by the way, this has been happening for like years and years. I mean, we're talking about 400 plus years of oppression here, you know? And then they're, they're expecting like black Americans to be like, oh, you're just always talking about racism. Oh, you always talk. Well, yeah, you've been fucking beating me 
down for 400 plus years. You've been robbing me of resources. You wouldn't let me rise financially. My children can't rise financially. What the fuck you think is going to happen? You know? Well, Mona, Mona, you have to remember that Rodney King, Rodney King was 29 years ago. And that was also on yes. film. Yes. That was on mm -hmm. film a white police officer beating a black man. And, and we yeah. saw that, we saw that. And yes, that was 29 years ago. So this isn't the first time we've seen something on film. This is not the first time we've had evidence. We've yeah. seen this before. It's just that they think they were gonna get away with it because they have always got away with it. Yes. I I'm gonna add a little bit to it, Shazia. I think because also we live in the age of viral and everything is global and you can post it on your social media and everybody, the world is connected on social media. It spread like wildfire. Back in 92, yeah. you didn't have your Twitter, you didn't have your Facebook, yeah. you didn't have yeah. your Instagram. You know, yeah. these things, the way they spread, it just had this massive impact on people. We're just like, well, wait a minute, this shit is still fucking happening. Like in real time, like this is where we're at. Like this oh, is, Rod, Rod, you know, Rodney King that started the LA riots back yeah. in the nineties, and and then nothing happened. You know, yeah. white police officers still continue to do this yeah. because they thought they were going to get away with it because they were getting away with it. Yeah. They were, yeah. and now I don't think I thought they. I think they thought they were going to get away with it again. Yeah. This yeah. Time. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and you're also looking at Breonna Taylor. You're looking at Ahmad Arbery, who was just jogging. Uh, you know, yeah. I mean, you're just That's and then, really. Then, go ahead, Maggie. I feel like that's really why these protests have kicked off like we did. We found ourselves in a perfect storm where one, we're all at home and there's nothing that we can do. Like we're at home. And then there's the unrest of we're realizing that the uh, everything is being peeled away and we're seeing all of the problems. We're seeing the problems with the healthcare system. We're seeing yeah. problems with our government bailing out uh, trillions into the stock market for a 20 minute dip. And then we get some consolation prize of $1,200. We're seeing this and we're getting angrier and angrier as uh, just people in general, like globally. And then we see um, people protesting to go outside. We see people in Minnesota armed people protesting in Minnesota at a Capitol building and we get upset and annoyed because we know it's not the same. And then the Ahmaud Aubrey thing happens and yeah. then Breonna Taylor happened. And yeah. then we see the whole video of, and yeah. I mean, Ahmad, Breonna and uh, George Floyd, that was yeah. all, this all happened within the past month. This yeah. was all within the past month. That's right. That's like we right. like just, that's right. So all of these happened at a time where people were already pissed on both sides. They are pissed because they want to go back out or they're pissed because people want to go out and they're not going to be safe. Like tensions were already high. And this right. was just the straw that broke the camel's back. And since the world is quiet and since, not you know it's a slow news year for us this year people of course picked up on it and they were like oh wow no like while you guys are changing everything you need to change with your healthcare access and yeah. with all these other things then there's something else that y'all need to change since we're all exposing the yeah. problems and the the cancers and the things that are festering under the surface let's yeah. go ahead and uncover this problem too 100%. I 100% I, I agree with you. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I, I think we have this deep rooted problem in the South Asian. And I would say I would even go as far as saying even in the Middle Eastern culture, when it comes to colorism, we have a very, very big problem. Uh, I was told growing up in my entire life that I was very dark because I grew up in Pakistan and my I get very, very tan and very, very dark and that I was ugly because of it. I, I would have relatives tell me that to my face, that I was ugly and I was unattractive. Uh, and then I had to get lighter to be beautiful or even to be considered for marriage. I mean, these are relatives saying that to my face. And in the, in the process, I ended up developing a personality. So thank God for that. Uh, but um, I, I, think, um, I think racism <laughs> is so deep rooted in the South Asian culture, Shazia, that even today it is not going anywhere. What do you think? 
I think that you need to um, stop freezing because you look hilarious. <laughs> I'm trying to, I look like I'm gonna fall asleep right after this. <laughs> no, 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 you really need to, you've got your hands in the air and your face. Like I just don't care. And your face is frozen and it's really, <laughs> like you're just it's really something. <laughs> I, can't, I can't speak to you or take you seriously when you're in this position. <laughs> so I'm trying to unfreeze myself and I don't know how to do that. So I'm trying to can you You're um, like Jai Ho in it? She is Jai Ho in it in the frozen box. <laughs> I mean, what was the question, even really? What was the question? <laughs> I'm still frozen. I wrote it myself and I added myself back, and I'm still frozen. <laughs> <laughs> Mona, why have you frozen? Do you know what? I think your broadband can't take you anymore. I think that, <laughs> Look at this, I'm I, still frozen. I think, yeah, I think you have, Mona, I think you have broken the internet. I think my, oh. <laughs> You've broken the internet. Mona yeah. Kardashian. I'm going to we'll call you Mona Kardashian now. Oh my first God. It was Kim's, first it was Kim, Kim's button. Oh, your button. hands up in the air. Now like it's you. Mona's face. I mean, <laughs> I mean. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I think it's just going to unfreeze itself as we go along, somewhere along the line. I'm, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm, putting, in a, I'm putting in a prayer in with Allah to help me out with this. Uh, uh, praise be to Allah to uh, get me unfrozen because I don't know what the hell is going on here. Uh, sorry, we were. I was talking about deep-rooted racism in the Desi culture, man. Desi culture is still very much about, you know, light-skinned, beautiful, beautiful women. Like, do, can I can I ask you guys something? Do you think Priyanka Chopra is gonna get in hot water for this bullshit ass tweet that she put out? Yeah, I do. I do because Priyanka says a lot of things oh, which offend people, and she's clearly doing it for the fame and the money. A few months back, she said something about India and Pakistan and the yeah. fighting between them. Yeah, and um, and and also kind of defending the Indian Prime Minister, who's a right wing fundamentalist. Yeah. yeah. And so a lot of people came down on her about that. And now she's come uh, speaking out about racism, but endorsing products that whiten the skin. I mean, she's quite clearly doing things for fame and money. And yeah. I think eventually, if you are not authentic at this time, it's very easy for you to get caught out because uh, the world has a big voice now. People are really speaking out about stuff and injustice and if you're if you're someone like Priyanka Chopra, who clearly loves being in the limelight, loves being a celebrity, but um, you have to be held account account to what you say. You know, if you if you're going to say talk out about racism, then you can't just say it. You've got to act on it. You can't yeah. be endorsing white yeah. pro products to whiten the skin and then say racism is bad because you are enabling that racism by promoting white products. Right. Exactly, and I'm so frozen. Hypocrisy. Yeah, no, no, no. The hypocrisy is uh is alive and well and uh, and uh, and kicking. Um, do you think? Do you think the? Do you think we, as like as brown and black cultures, have developed an inferiority complex? Uh, and do you think? And when do you think we're going to start like coming out of it? Because I think we are already beginning to come out of it because of the way we're speaking out and speaking against a celebrities like that, against white supremacy, against this fucked up ass president that we have in place. Um, but I feel like it's pretty freaking deep rooted where we feel that we are less than somehow. Uh, Maggie, what do you think? Um, I wouldn't say that. Uh... If anything, I see a lot more um, embracing of who we are and what we have to go through and our, you know, issues and struggles and, you know, oppression that we're having to, you know, fight against. I don't, I can, you know, maybe I do and I don't know about it, but I don't know anybody who's black that wants to be a white person. Like we would love the rights. That would be great. Um, I would love 
easily combable hair. That's about it. Um, but nobody like nobody I know that's black wants to be white. It's just it, it seems that way because they're the they're the ones who have all. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. Yeah. if you know the snitches didn't want to be star bellied, it just you know, that's not even an accurate um, thing. Uh, sorry, I was trying to make an analogy and that wasn't accurate at all, but it's like, no one wants to be the person. You just want what that person has. No one wants to be Kim Kardashian. You want her money and her fame. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean- That's, that's a better. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's like this, uh, yeah, I think there's this uh, Pakistani sisters there in, I think they're in the Middle East somewhere. And they literally look like the two Kardashians. I mean, it's just really sad when you look at that. You're there's like, many. There's huh? many. <laughs> there's <laughs> there's many. <laughs> oh, yeah. I felt really sad for them. And I was like, that is a very sad existence uh, that you constantly have to think. You know, Maggie, I think I think, uh, I think, uh, the, the Black American culture is a lot more evolved, I feel, than the uh, South Asian culture in the sense that we are still worshiping the white skin, uh, where, thank God, the African American community in America is not worshiping and, you know, and then doesn't think of it that way at all. With us, it's still very much a worshiping of, like, oh, the white people, when they say it, it must be right. Like, whatever they say, it must be right. Like, Oh, be lighter, be beautiful, like be like them, right, Shazia? Don't you think that way? Don't you think that that's happening still? What, what that white is more attractive? Yes. Well, I mean that that that's because of what we see. It's mainly white women on the covers of magazines. It's mainly white celebrities. White people earn more money. White people get better jobs. It's white people running Hollywood. You know, we only go on what we see. You know, if there were more black people in positions of power that could change things, that were earning more money. You know, every time a black person or a brown person earns a lot of money, they make a big deal of it. Uh, right. because, because that's their only example, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, there sh it shouldn't be a big thing. It should be normal. They should be earning the same as white people. We should be on the covers of magazines like all the white people. We should be getting roles like white people. It shouldn't be made an issue when yeah. one of us does it. Mm -hmm. because yeah. And that's what's happened. That's what's happening now. It's like, oh, we've given a black person a, a chance. We've given a brown person a role, you know. Right. But why is it? Why is it even talked about? Shouldn't even mm -hmm. be talked about. It yep. should just be normal. Yep. Yep. Mina, do you do you see that? They talk about it because yep. it's normal. Sorry, go, ahead. go ahead, Maggie. What were you saying? So oh. they talk because it's not normal. Like people can, when you can, put one example. It's the same thing. If people like oh racism is over obama was president if they can point to that one example then in their minds problems over we don't have to worry about all of you guys <laughs> saying that you don't get cast we cast that one like that's just one example is enough to soothe you know, soothe people who really don't care that's right that's right. That's right. Uh, look, we have one example, right? Hey, we made we made uh, Obama president. Mm -hmm. so that means racism is over. I mean, if we were racist, then why would we elect a black president? Um, he got elected mm -hmm. because he was a, he's a phenomenal human being. He's a phenomenal leader. That's why he got elected. Like he didn't get elected because he's black. He got elected because he's incredible. I mean, even even now that he's not the president, have you heard some of the statements that he makes? I mean, the man is just. He's just phenomenal. Like I was watching, uh, I, I watch. I don't know if you guys have access to. Um, I, I mean, the folks that Shazia and Maggie do. I mean, I'm sure you have it too. Uh, uh, the uh, Netflix special that they did on uh, uh, Michelle Obama. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my oh yeah. God. It had me in tears, man. It had me in tears because she's just such a beautiful, beautiful woman, you know. And, yeah. she, and they still they just keep raising the bar. Every time you talk to them, they just keep raising the bar. People keep coming at him with bullshit ass shit. They just keep raising the bar. And you're like, wow, man, the kind of shit that, you know, like a black family has to go through that's in the White House or a brown family has to go through it. There's some kind of position of power versus what the bullshit like white family has to go through. Like Trump with this. Uh, by the way, does anybody know where the fuck Melania is? Anybody have any clue? Melania died years ago, and um, they just keep wheeling out. She's, she's dead. She died 10 years ago, but I think they're just wheeling out this imposter now. 
<laughs> I, don't think, I don't think she exists. She was secretly murdered by the CIA, I'm sure. Oh, God. Do, yeah, do you think this imposter is like the dead version of her? They like yeah. weekend at Bernie's her? It's like oh a blow God. up doll. It's like the blow up doll, Melania. They've just stuffed her and, <laughs> and wheeled, her, wheeled her back out. I right. don't think this woman exists. Nobody heard her speak in the first place. No, you have to be no. there. Except when she did Michelle Obama's speech, when she plagiarized oh, Michelle Obama's speech. Oh, <laughs> that was the best. And she got, <laughs> she got dragged out on the social media for it. I mean, she got like dragged. And and, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. Um, what do you guys think? Uh, what do you guys think the, the protests and the impact that's happening right now? I mean, we're already beginning to see changes where uh, Mayor Garcetti, the LA mayor, just came out today where they're passing a law or they're they're taking off, like, apparently a chokehold or a neck grab, uh, you know, when taking in people was a common thing, and now he's removing that as part of a mandatory thing. Um, what, do you, what, what kind of changes, you, how many, do you think it's going to make big changes at this point with, with what's happening right now? Maggie, what do you think? I mean, one can hope the amount of changes yeah. that really need to happen and the amount that needs to go against status quo like i mean we can hope and you know i always hope but it's i mean i feel like the police ought to be defunded and that's a hard sell for a lot of people that's a hard thing to get your mind wrapped around for you know if you don't really like take the time and look and really see what it what it means to defund the police but like you know, I'll, I'll be cautiously optimistic. I hope that this ushers in some real change and not just a, oh, well, you can't use a chokehold and, you know, they also can turn off their body cams and then it's their word versus their, like, all of that is like, that's all nice and everything, but like, yeah, that's all honor system stuff. If you don't turn, you know, we were like, feeling so great because we got everybody to wear body cams now they don't turn them on you know and like so it feeds the purpose of even having one so like if you're not even telling the truth about what you're doing and you're not having any sort of accountability like what 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 hope do i have that you're going to do the right thing when it's just left up to you if somebody has to tell you in the first place don't use a chokehold on a human being if you're just trying to like detain like someone has to tell you that in the first place what makes me think that you're gonna like of your own volition right. do so you know if you need the the letter of the law written and you can't understand the spirit of the law which is don't harm those that you're here to protect and serve how like what else do i need to write down for you like i, I that doesn't really like that doesn't make me feel like we've like won anything or like we've you know gotten any kind of a victory by saying like you can't do chokeholds like hmm. that's right no it's not it's not nearly it's not nearly the different i mean you have these these uh, these guys uh like police guys like doing kkk signs did you see that in new york uh during the protest or one of the mm -hmm. cops standing there and he's doing the the kkk sign and i'm like Motherfucker, do you know what what's happening right now? Like you're throwing off like KKK sign. They should have. They should remove that asshole like immediately. Take all his pension away, all his salary. Fuck you. Get the fuck out. You don't deserve to be in this bad. Uh, in this in you know in this uniform. Maggie, when you talk about defunding the police, can we go a little bit deep into that? I know that's like uh like a, it's like a big overwhelming thing. Like, what do you mean by defunding the police? Tell me about that. Like, you mean let's have no police? I mean, I'd be cool with no police. I feel like if we were to place the police the people who were actually trained how to help people who need the kind of help that they're going to be needing, like, then, you know, that would be one thing. But as it is, the police are not trained to deal with a lot of the problems that they are also tasked to deal with they're kind of a catch-all uh you know if you don't know who to call call the police like the police is here to take care of stuff but also worked 
as a transcriptionist for like health and human services commission back when I lived in Texas. And I would hear people say like the police do not have the training for this. The police are responding to these things and they aren't trained to deal with this. They don't have the training to deal with mental health. They don't have the training to deal with uh, people who have like certain issues. Like they don't have that kind of training. So mm -hmm. if it's an issue of, we need to have people helped. Well, why don't we replace them with people who can take care of these issues? Uh, like a lot of the problems that we have are allocated to the police. Like I think, what is it about 50% of the budget to deal with homelessness is just for police sweeps. How does that help? It helps nothing. And like the amount of money that we spend on like technology for police that they can just turn around and not use you know we spend all this money for body cams for police so we can give some kind of a semblance of them having some sort of a a, a, a watch over like a, a watch on them and then they don't turn it on and it's defeated the purpose we've spent all this money for what for nothing like i don't think Pete, we should be spending all of this money to uh give militarized air to police officers because one that doesn't help anything and two and it just helps give them the mindset that they are at war against the people that they're actually supposed to be protecting serving so the entire system and like how it's uh, what we're allocating money towards and what we are uh funneling energy towards it all needs to be changed and scrapped and it's not a thing of like oh well we can fix it from here where we are we can fix it from where we are no we need to dismantle what is currently not working and rebuild it to something that will work. Right, right. No, I'm. That's I'm, the only way. Right, right. No, I, I 100% agree with you. I mean, we have like well over 85,000 homeless people in Los Angeles in Skid Row. Like, you go down to Skid Row, it looks like a zombie land. Like, these people have no resources. The government doesn't give a shit about them. They're like the forgotten, the forgotten children of God, you know? And it's like, nobody should be a forgotten child of God. Like we are all God's people. Like this is, we, 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 are, we are the richest nation in the world. How can we not take care of our, the, the weakest in our community? How is that possible? Like we have so much money. We're, we just had a trillionaire. Uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon's uh, Jeff Bezos just became a trillionaire. We don't have enough money. We yeah. have plenty of fucking money, you know. Um, Mina, what about you? What do, what do, you know? I mean, have you guys had protests in Dubai for this? No, no protests. No. Interesting. And no, it's 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 uh, it's it's tricky. Mm. Protesting is 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 a bit tricky over here. Um, there was many revolutions that happened and. Um, there are different groups and different things, so it's not, it's a different world. It's kind of a different world over here. So the protesting is, is in different forms. There's a lot of stuff that's online. There's a lot of artwork. There's a lot of hip hop. There's a lot of rap being written. Um, but it's, it's, it's a bit more complicated in the Middle East. Um, and I think that there's a, a fear of, of protests in, in that capacity. So um, we always we always kind of laugh. We're like, it's way too hot outside. Um, but in reality, it's 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 not really. Um, the UAE again is so. It's really focusing on tolerance. Again, uh, over two hundred nationalities live here very peacefully. Um, and everything that's happening, like in Palestine and Israel, is right around the corner. We have India and Pakistan happening. We have Syria, and then there's so many things that are happening. Even in Saudi, there's so much corruption that the UAE is kind of like this safe haven. And um, they it, protesting here. I, I I don't know. If, mm, I don't think that they would. Um, I think they would support. They would support people being, uh, you know, fighting against racism, and they do have laws intact here. Uh, like I kind of briefly spoke about it earlier, but if if I was to go on your Facebook page right now and say something, a racist comment, um, shit about your religion, you can take it to the police and you can arrest me and press charges. They take it very, very, very seriously. Cyberbullying, um, WhatsApping, um, you will get fired. I mean, it's, it's they don't take any shit. Um, if, if something, the line is crossed, uh, it's addressed right away. 
Yeah. So they're they're trying to fight racism and they're they're really really doing their best to try to enhance scholarism and diversity and 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 just peaceful a peaceful standard of living. Yeah. So uh, I think for them a protest might rock the boat. And I can't speak. I, I honestly I I can't speak for the government, but this is just my interpretation of it. Is that definitely. Uh, I think they, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that, but there's a lot of stuff again online. There's a lot of discussions. There's um, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff behind the scenes, but in terms of marching in the streets, no, not here. Yeah. No. I mean, so yeah. people do protest online and if they're saying, you know, or if they come out and they say something against the protest, would they be arrested or would they be losing their jobs over it? Is that something that would happen to them? I, I think, yeah, I think like if, if um, as, as an American, if um, I, I'm very open about my discussions online and, you know, I, I definitely, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, they we have moms groups on Facebook, right? And so there's a there's a group for like American moms living in the Middle East, and we try to like you know. And sometimes it's like you know just like some bullshit like yo, where's the best tacos at? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I, sometimes it's like with right now, it's like yo, even though we're not in the states, we can't. No, 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 no. This is happening, and we need to acknowledge it, and we need to talk to our families about about what's happening. What are we doing to be better moms? What are we doing to like raise better kids? We have to have discussion right now. Yeah. And if one of these women even attacked me because I was saying, "What are we doing?" and you know, "What are we doing? What are we doing to make a difference?" I don't want to talk about today. Yeah. I want to talk about action. What are we actually fucking doing? Yeah. And if somebody wrote on me, oh, you're supporting, you're supporting these black people, you're doing this, this, and this. Oh, no, no, no. I can print screen this and I could go to the cop today and the cops would arrest her. Wow. They, don't, they do not play with that. They I love do that. not play with that. I mean, I respect that. I, I definitely I like Yeah. No. Yeah. They, they do, uh, yeah, I respect. They won't tolerate that, and so that I I've never seen that when it screams. I'm like, okay, all right. Yeah, so, no, I, I respect yeah. that a lot. I mean, and I, even like when when the revolution was happening, uh, it, it, they there was like UAE, like um, I think like other countries when the Arab Spring was happening, and there's a lot of revolutions and protests and all kinds of things were happening in the UAE. The things that they were fighting for in all their countries, we didn't have those problems. There wasn't a reason for us. Mm -hmm. um, again, our, our leadership, they hear the people and they want to make it better. Like, we're a very young country over here, but we implement stuff so fast that like I've never seen before in any other country. So I just, I see progress and, you know, I, I, I'm, I can't wait to see this. You know, again, I've been here 13 years, so I've seen a huge difference. Yeah. But I, I definitely like can't wait to see it five years from now. And, and those protests in the state are making a huge impact. Huge yeah. impact. I hear people talking about it online in the grocery store. And again, I'm I've been on lockdown as well, so I'm not as social. But like I'm doing a lot of like Zoom shows and different things. Everyone is talking about it. Of course, you see what's happening. And people are not ignoring it over here. And the conversation is big time getting started on, on a different level where people sometimes online were a little afraid. And, mm -hmm. and people are schooling each other right now because over here they'll be like, you know, hashtag all lives matter. What about this? What about that? And oh, people right. are stepping up and they're like, no, and this is why. And right. it's amazing to see, not just in the States, it's like over here, people are like, no, we need to look at this and, and take it seriously. So I think that, that that's pretty dope. I think it's pretty dope. And it's, it's definitely, I think from the outside in, you know, it's hard. Honestly, I'm not going to lie. I want to be there. I want to be there marching in the streets. I want to be there 100%. Yeah. And, and so I'm not, but I, I can see where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And it's like if someone wants to talk about it, I'm for, I'm like, let's have this uncomfortable discussion. Let's let's get real and let's talk about the system. 
You know, I I can't tell you how many people I've been like. So, have you heard of this woman? Um, let, let's watch some Jane Elliott. Have you heard of Jane Elliott? <laughs> let's, let's let's watch this video. <laughs> Jane Elliott. Jane Elliott is one of the baddest bitches out there. Jane Elliott is a star. No joke. In 1968, she conducted her first experiment, social experiment with a group of third graders the day after Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. Like, can you imagine like this white woman, a teacher in a small Midwestern, like all white school was like, I want to make a difference. Yeah. Oh my, like mm -hmm. so much respect for her. And, and, and to this day, I look back and I, I watch those same videos of her on Oprah and yeah. it's mm -hmm. louder yeah. than yeah. it was then. Yes. I'm like, oh my God, the things that she said and, and, and she speaks on a different level to, to teachers, to non-black mothers yeah. and educators and, and, and people just around the world. She has a different type of voice that people are like, wait, she's old. She's, she's 80? Because we all, we all have at least one racist person in our family that we're afraid because we're like, oh, they're too old. No, 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 no. It, now's the time. We have to say something. Yep. Age I, is not, that's yeah. not a, that's not an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> old yes. and racist is not, that's not an excuse. Sorry. You can't use Look at Jane. I can't justify hate. hate. Yeah, watch sure. Granny Jane and, and the old bitch. <laughs> I, I love, I love, I love mm -hmm. Jane. Uh, she's I, the I, thing. Yeah, she's she's pretty fantastic. Uh, uh, Shazia, we'll uh, we'll get your thoughts, and then we're gonna wrap up. And you ladies are more than welcome in the group chat to put down your socials if you want to type them now and start to put your socials down. You're welcome to. But uh, Shazia, your your last thoughts. Well, in London, everybody has been protesting. I mean, we were in the middle of a world, we were in the middle of a worldwide pandemic and a black man got murdered and it knocked that pandemic off the scale. No one gives a shit about coronavirus. A black man got murdered and everybody went mad. Everybody's been protesting in Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, London, all over. No one gives a shit about the virus. They're going out there without masks on, without gloves on, and they're protesting. It's like, you know what? Another black man got murdered. People are so angry. No one gives a shit about the virus. That's how bad and how angry it made people feel. Amazing. I mean, I, I, um, I, and, and where, where was, where did he live? What city was he from? Sorry. What city was he on? In the, the guy who was murdered. Oh um, no! Well, I, I'm, I'm talking about, I'm talking about what's happened in America. This, this one. Yeah, you're talking about George, oh, you're talking about George and uh, Ahmad and uh, Brianna. Yeah, for sure. I mean, for sure. Um, ladies, I, I know I've had you, I, I've had the other ladies on for like two hours and I gave had you for almost an hour or two. So, uh, my God, I, uh, this, uh, this panel was, uh, way better than I even expected to be. I was like, this is going to be a really awesome panel. I'm like, no, this panel is even better than I even thought it was going to be. But this is so very awesome. Thank you for taking the time. Uh, for Shazia, it's her evening time. Uh, Nina, it's like past midnight. Uh, and Maggie, thank you for taking time on your Saturday. Like 2 a.m. 2 a.m. Oh, oh, and I got a bra and lipstick on. I'm Thank like, hey. yeah. <laughs> Say Listen, what? I can't see the bra, girl. So we're, we've all been having our tatas <laughs> out here. That nobody's been wearing a bra during the pandemic. I don't know who's wearing the bra. You know. <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> I, I tell you what, Mona, my breasts have been self isolating. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> They have been. Mine, mine, are, mine are just social distancing because I just had another birthday. Uh, so they're just social distancing on a level that I've never seen it before. Uh, my my fupa keeps getting bigger and my tits keep getting social distancing. So it's, uh, you know what the fupa is, right, Maggie? You know the fupa. Oh my God. I can't hear you. I said, can you hear me now? I said, you know what the fupa is? Yeah. Okay. I can hear you now. Yeah, I was yeah. saying. I was saying, <laughs> I was saying my fupa keep getting bigger is what I was saying. Uh, but you ladies are so amazing. Thank you so very much. Um, Thank you. 
Ma Maggie, where, where can we find you on social media? Where can people follow you? I'm at Maggie May, haha, and May is spelled M A Y E. So Maggie, like normal, M A Y E, and then haha, like usual. Can you type it also in the group chat? Can you see it? Can you see the group chat? Yeah. yeah. Um, I put it in private chat. I couldn't find a place to put it in the group chat, but I'll I'll keep looking. I'll do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I think it should uh, it should get let you do it. I don't know why it doesn't let you. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, it's in it's in here. I see it. Um. Oh, I see where I see it. I see it. I see yeah. it. Private chat. I'm in the private chat. I see. I see. I see. Oh, it doesn't oh, let you. In the private chat the whole time. Yeah, me too. Yes. Okay. Put it in the private chat. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just copy pasting it because that's what I do with my entire life. I just copy paste. Oh, everything. I didn't know how to put it in with the copy paste. I, I, I got you, girl. Don't you worry. I, I got, I, I got you. Um, ladies, this has been. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank, this you has been having us. thank you, Mona. This was wonderful. Thank you. thank you so very much. I'm sorry about the technical difficulty and that I still look like I'm having a stroke. Uh, but uh, yes. I think we but a Bollywood stroke. <laughs> a Bollywood <laughs> stroke at that. You're really, you're, you're, you know, you're going for it. I'm just, <laughs> I'm raising the roof. I'm raising the roof is what I'm doing. Um, ladies, thank you very much. <laughs> it looks like you're waiting for the beat to drop. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I am waiting for the yeah. beat to drop. Yes. No, just keep inspiring. I like all of y'all are leading the way, and 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 you know, I see you. And um, if you ever need anything from Dubai or you want to venture over here again, you just give me a holler because uh, we need to hear your voices. All Thank right. You. You, have a, you. you have a family welcome waiting for you. Thank <laughs> you very much. I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Ladies, thank you very much. Shazia, Maggie, Mina, I love you, ladies. Thank you so very much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Take Thanks, Bye. Maggie. Bye. Bye. It's fun. Oh my God. Um, it's, um, thank you very much. I'm still frozen for reasons beyond my comprehension. I don't know, but thank you to everyone for joining us. You can follow us. This is still going to be on the Facebook live. It's still going to be on YouTube live, um, on, uh, Mona shake. Uh, you can go and check it out. Thank you very much for joining us. I love you guys. I'm still frozen, but that's okay. Uh, see you guys next time.